Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I have a part three to my church cookbook recipes. You guys are loving these. I'm loving just making those good comforting recipes that you can find in a good old fashioned church cookbook. So today I have three more recipes for you. I have two side dish recipes and of course I couldn't leave out a good old dessert. So that'll be in there as well. So thank you so much for joining me. I'll have the other two church recipe videos linked down below. If you missed those, be sure and go check those out. But without further ado, let's get into part three of these church cookbook recipes. For this recipe, you're going to use a large pot. You're only going to be cooking a little bit of rice, but you're going to add a bunch of other stuff in here once the rice is done. This is basically going to be our mixing bowl as well. But first, we're going to add one small can of chicken broth or about 14.5 ounces. That's not quite two cups. And then you're also going to add one cup of rice. So I'm just gonna give this a stir in the pot and we're just gonna bring this up to a bowl. All right, so the recipe says just to use that chicken broth and rice and after 20 minutes when the liquid is all soaked up, your rice will be done. But I just checked mine, my rice is not quite done. So just so y'all know, I am adding another half a cup of water just because I, you know, we don't want no crunchy rice in here, okay? All right, we're gonna let that go just a couple more minutes. All right, the rice is done, so I'm just gonna move it back so it can cool a little bit. Next, we're gonna add one cup of sour cream. I just bought a small little container, so we're gonna add that in. Can't have sour cream rice without sour cream and rice. Next to the pot, we're gonna add four ounces of diced green chilies. If you've never had these, they are not spicy. They just add flavor, no heat. Next, we're also gonna add one can of drained yellow corn. Next, the recipe calls for Monterey Jack cheese. I just have Colby Jack, which is just Colby and Monterey Jack. And we're gonna add about a cup to the pot. I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. And then we're gonna mix everything together. eight by eight baking dish. I'm gonna give that some cooking spray, some avocado oil. And then next, we're just gonna transfer all this into the baking dish. I feel like you could definitely make this your own too. Like if your family doesn't even like the peppers, just leave those out completely. Or even leave out the corn too. And just have kind of a, a rice dish with the cheese and sour cream. All right, lastly, I'm just gonna top it with that remaining cup of the Colby Jack cheese. All right, this is gonna bake at 350 uncovered for about 30 minutes. there is that sour cream rice. We're just having ours tonight with some fried okra, some southern fried okra, and some chicken that I threw in the crock pot. I will link this video if you wanna see how I cook the chicken and the okra. I'll link it below, it was last week's video. But this rice is delicious. Y'all trust me, it is so good. Such a different idea for a rice dish. Y'all need to give that one a try. All right, so first of all, you're gonna need one box of angel food cake mix. And you're just gonna make this according to the package directions. So 
So I've actually never made a box angel food cake before, but it puffs up. So the box says you can either use two loaf pans, three loaf pans, depending on the size, or an angel food tube pan. Well, I don't have any of that. So I'm just gonna use a one nine by 13 and then one loaf pan. I'm gonna hope that it doesn't puff up too much over these pans. I'm just gonna watch these in the oven because the cooking time varies depending on what pan you use. So I'm just gonna watch them, try to guess when they look done. And I just thought, even to make this easier, you could just buy, you know, angel food cake already at the store, like an angel food, they call it angel food pound cake. You know what I'm talking about, the little cakes, they have them in bakeries. You could just buy it and that would make it a lot easier. So just as a reference, here are what my two angel food cakes look like when they come out of the oven. They definitely puffed up a little bit, but they already are kind of sinking back down after I baked them. So now we're gonna get to work on the other stuff. Next, I'm just adding two cans of sweetened condensed milk to a bowl with key lime juice. I'm using this key lime juice. Feel free to use the fresh if you want to. One time I made a key lime pie, y'all. Or key lime, I think it was a key lime pie. And I hand juiced 25 of them a little baby key limes. So from now on, I just buy the bottle of key lime juice. It was good though. All right, this is not in the recipe, but I have some lime extract. I think I'm gonna add it a little bit, just to give it a little bit more strong lime flavor. I tasted this and it is good. I'm not gonna add a bunch, so I don't wanna mess it up. Okay, let's see how that tastes. Oh, that is way better. That makes it. So, if you can, get the lime extract. I probably added a fourth of a teaspoon. Next, I'm just taking one small carton of heavy whipping cream and I'm just gonna whip that until stiff peaks form. Next, you're just gonna take that homemade whipped cream and you're gonna mix that with your sweetened condensed milk and lime juice mixture. Just gently fold that in so that way your whipped cream stays all airy. So for our crust layer, in quotation marks, you're actually going to use these Nature Valley granola bars, the oats and honey kind. You need about 10, and I just crushed mine up with a meat tenderizer in a gallon size bag. Next, for our top layer of our trifle, you're going to need two of these containers of the Cool Whip in the extra creamy variety. You're just going to add that to a bowl, and then you're going to need about two teaspoons of lime zest. And again, I just bought regular limes. I figured it was all the same. In a gown and a crown, barefoot. Now that we have all of our layers made, we're just gonna start layering it in our trifle bowl. So first, I'm adding that lime sweetened condensed milk layer and then I have my cakes pulled out of the oven. You can do however you want as far as, you know, what do you do next, but adding in that granola layer, and always when you do trifles, you kinda wanna make sure you get some like right up against the edge, because of course, that's your whole presentation, that's kinda the whole thing with these. It makes it look so pretty when you get everything in there. So I am literally just tearing this angel food cake and putting that in there along with the lime and sweetened condensed milk mixture. And you save actually the Cool Whip mixture just to go on top with your lime zest in there. So I'm just layering it all up until I fill up my bowl. I'm making a little one for us to try tonight. But I had to tell y'all, I'm thinking about it. I just told this story to McKenna. So y'all might remember I mentioned 
Ruby, Miss Ruby, in my Easter um, Decorate With Me video. She's the one that had the little egg trees that I would hang the eggs on and everything when I was little. Well, I don't know if this is a real thing, but we had this bakery that sold like all kinds of bread and everybody around would go there to get like their bread for anything, buns or whatever. So when I would go there with Miss Ruby, so when I would go there with her, she would buy a angel food cake and it came, you know, in like a bunt form and she called it a pinch cake, okay? Does anybody know what a pinch cake is? Is this a real thing? Did Ruby make this up? But do you know why she called it a pinch cake? Because as soon as we bought it, we would get in the car and she took the top off and we would just sit there and pinch this little angel food cake and eat it going down the road. And it was so good and I still remember that. And now this reminds me of a pinch cake. You ever had a pinch cake? Does that exist? Is that a real thing? I don't know, but another Miss Ruby memory. So like I said, you just want to end with that Cool Whip mixture with the lime zest in there. And then of course you can top it and decorate it however you want to. Um, I saw a picture of one with the little granola just around the edges. And then a couple lime slices for a garnish right in the center. And I thought that looked so cute, so that's what I did. And y'all, we actually had this for um, an Easter dessert. I took it to my mom's after church for lunch and everybody loved it it was so good definitely had that tart flavor with the sweet but not overly sweet i think next time i'll add even more of the granola i didn't quite add it all but it was the perfect spring and easter dessert up next last but definitely not least we have another favorite in a southern church cookbook and that is broccoli cheddar casserole and this one is so good so just for reference i'm actually halving this recipe today just for our family of four and this ended up being plenty for us and some of us are not the most big fans of broccoli so i didn't want to make you know a whole big casserole if some of us didn't really like it. But I have to say, spoiler alert, we all did. It was very, very good. But I'm just starting by chopping up about two or three heads of fresh broccoli. And I just steam mine with a little bit of water in the microwave. It only takes about five minutes. And I definitely recommend using fresh broccoli over the bad kind if you can for this recipe. But as always, I'll have the entire recipes typed out below for you in the description box. So once your broccoli is all steamed up, you're just going to add that to the bottom of your baking dish and then we're going to make a really simple kind of cheese topping to go over the top. So in a mixing bowl over here, I have two tablespoons of melted butter, a little bit of mayonnaise, and I'm just going to add some cream of chicken soup to that. And again, I am having this, so, you know, just depending on how much you need, you can do the whole recipe, but this fed our family of four perfectly. So also I'm adding in some finely diced chopped onion. I'm adding in a little sprinkle of garlic powder and salt and pepper. And then I'm just going to mix all this up together. Next, we're just going to add an egg and some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. We're going to mix that together and this is going to be our cheese topping for this broccoli. So while I'm adding this on top and then some crushed Ritz crackers as well, I wanted to take a second and tell you guys how much I appreciate y'all. Thank you so much. I honestly can't believe we are coming right up on 100K. When I started my YouTube channel a few years ago, just as a stay at home mom, looking for that creative outlet a way to make friends and just share some good old home cooking recipes I never in a million years thought I would be able to reach this milestone so I'm so excited to celebrate and I'm so excited to celebrate with y'all because after all you guys are what is making this milestone possible so 
down in the comments below. I want y'all to tell me what we should do for a giveaway because I definitely want to give a big thank you to y'all. Should we do, should I just go shopping and buy a bunch of really cool stuff? That's kind of what I thought I would do as just a big giveaway. Should we do one big gift card, one bigger item, or just some cash? Y'all let me know. Please don't be shy. Let me know what you'd rather have down in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed already, you still can. That would still help me out to reach that 100K even quicker so we can do a fun giveaway and celebrate. But you guys have no idea how much I appreciate y'all, how much I love y'all, how much I love uploading a video and then being able to talk to y'all in the comments. This is seriously a dream job, a dream come true for me. So thank y'all, but here's that broccoli and cheddar casserole. It was perfect. I cannot wait to have this again. All right, y'all, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed these recipes. These three were probably my favorite that we've actually tried so far. Um, like I said, we had that key lime trifle for Easter and everybody loved it. It was just the perfect spring dessert. So anyway, as always, leave me a comment below and let me know what is your favorite traditional church recipe, something you always take or something maybe you found in a church cookbook. I would absolutely love to know and I hope you guys are all doing amazing. I'll see you real soon in my next video. Bye y'all.